Hey guys, so today we're going to introduce uh, medieval style dagger fighting techniques. So let's introduce the, the medieval style dagger. Dagger fighting has been around since way before history began uh, being recorded. Fighting knives have simply grown from, from a knife into a sword and from a sword into a long sword and, and then so on and so on. A dagger is basically a secondary weapon. It's not, it's not usually your primary weapon. So by secondary weapon, so your primary weapon usually is a spear or an axe. In, in some cases a, uh, a bow or a sword and a dagger would be used in much the same way as a modern soldier might use a, a pistol and that is to say that once their main rifle maybe it's an AR or an AK-47 has run out of ammunition you then switch over to your pistol or if your main weapon malfunctions those kinds of things and what would the dagger be for? a dagger is mostly a defensive weapon I say mostly because a dagger is ideal for close quarter combat. So there's actually a, a really interesting illustration in the Majowski Bible, otherwise known as the Crusaders Bible. And there's this knight approaching a castle, which is obviously under siege, and, uh, and he's got his dagger out and he's clearly going into the castle to start, um, start taking out the enemy. Uh, so as I say, absolutely superb weapon for, for close quarter combat. Um, but mostly, mostly a defensive weapon and a secondary weapon. So what would a dagger be then? Uh, a dagger, if we look at it, uh, we have a point, we have an edge on both sides. The fuller, generally speaking, covers most of the blade, um, not all necessarily on all daggers. A fuller is there for strength, it's not a bleeder, as some people refer to it as, or a something to pull out the air with, I don't know. Anyway, you then got your cross guard, <laughs> Your handle and your pommel. What's a pommel used for? We'll come back to pommel in a second. So this whole section is the, known as the hilt. And a dagger is basically a fighting knife. So we have a nice open stance. You need to be as much ready to, to move with your body as with your hands. Your dagger fighting is a whole of body kind of thing. And uh, your success with the dagger comes as much from your ability to move your feet and your knees and to move your body quickly as it does with your hands. Grip. Interesting question. A lot of people debate about whether it's an overhand or an underhand grip. What, what was it? Well, generally speaking, we use an ice pick grip. I spent 14 years of my life as a paramedic and a nurse. In, in emergency medicine and that kind of thing in primary health. Unfortunately I've seen the result of a lot of stab wounds and most of these are caused by people um, using like a, a, an ice pick grip as it's referred to. Um, these injuries are obviously quite serious and what tends to happen when we are in a high stress environment we lose our fine motor control and then we only have our gross motor control. So what we're really looking at here is our ability um, to use precise moves is gone because our adrenaline is so high and you really just are wanting to um, rely on, on big movements. When we talk about the grips for the dagger, both of these actually have advantages and disadvantages. An underhanded grip means that I'm primarily using my shoulder muscles and my side muscles more than anything else. Now this is a, 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 this is a great grip 
if I'm going to try and attack someone in a surprise attack or an ambush type scenario. However, predominantly I need to be using an ice pick grip. The advantages of this position are that it relies on much more of my arm muscles, a greater use of my core muscles, and I can also leverage in my body weight. If I can get down into the shoulder area of my opponent, I'm going to be able to deliver a far more um, decisive blow than otherwise may be achieved. The disadvantage of an underhand grip is it's actually, uh, relatively speaking, quite easy to push away from. Whereas an upper hand grip, I can keep this in the center line of my body and attack that way, pivoting and using my body weight to leverage the blade into my opponent's body. For dagger fighting, there's generally uh, two positions you can start from. And like sword fighting, where there's a whole bunch of them. In dagger fighting, you generally speaking have a high guard or a low guard position to start from. My first strike, as much as anything, if I'm gonna be using a dagger, I'm aiming for to debilitate my opponent as quickly as possible. Medieval knife fighting skills is different from today and the sorts of knives available today are, are much different. They're far more utilitarian in for the mainstream, although you obviously can get hold of um, military type fighting knives and so on, such as the Faberian Sykes and many, many, many others. My initial uh, strike really is I'm going to be aiming for my opponent's neck. If I miss his neck, I've still got this whole area. <coughs> Rightio, let's talk target zones. As with any weapons training, always train with a dedicated training weapon. This is the Cold Steel Medieval Training Dagger and it's perfect for this kind of thing. It's nice soft edges, still the same kind of weight as a live blade, but uh, this is plastic, it's really not gonna kill anyone. Please don't ever use a live blade for training. It's only gonna end in disaster. All right, target zones. I essentially have four target zones, which I'm gonna be aiming for. Remember, this is about quickly debilitating an opponent so that I can move on to the next opponent. My first target zone, realistically, I'm looking at really the neck zone and the upper shoulder in this area here. Radio. Second target zone is really the temple. Third target zone is the abdomen, principally from the side. If Matthew is wearing any protection, it's gonna come down here. Therefore, into the side, I'm more likely to be able to get through. My fourth target zone is his groin and his upper thigh. Medieval people would have understood that these are all areas of serious vulnerability and the results uh, speak for themselves. Okay, we have major arteries, major veins, we have major organs, we have um, a, a, a very rapid ability to deal with an opponent and, as I say, move on to the next one. As I said before, dagger fighting is not, uh, is not strictly about one hand or one position or, or fighting in a, in a static sort of position as you often see uh, in, in some of these movies and so on. Dagger fighting is about Dagger fighting is not about a strict one-handed position, it's not about one stance, it's not about um, anything like that. It's a fluid motion. And therefore, the ability to use both hands equally is just as important as the ability to use one hand well. You need to be able to preempt what your opponent is going to do, and you need to be able to um, deliver a decisive strike. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.